Hello YouTube and welcome to GoGo -Go Gaming's coverage of the game Arc Age. On this channel I'll be covering housing, farming, crafting, auction house use, and trading. This video is going to talk about a very valuable tool of the trade called the Clipper Ship. The Clipper Ship is, in my opinion, your first entry into water, trading by water doesn't matter if it's same side or opposite side this thing comes in handy unfortunately it only holds one trade pack and that's the one that would go on your back but it is a thousand times faster and more maneuverable than the rowboat and you will see lots of people with clipper ships because they are relatively easy to just like the 16 by 16 house, clipper ships are pretty easy to get. You can buy one with Gilda Stars for 50 Gilda Stars, or you can buy one off the auction house, and it depends on you know what the demand is at that time. I bought mine off the auction house. I don't remember how much I bought it for, but it was it was several tens of gold. So, you know, like 20, 30, 40, 50. The features of the Clipper ship include this captain's intuition, which greatly increases evasion and evasion while steering a ship. So I can put it on and it'll stay on until I am no longer steering. The ever important owner's mark, which allows only the owner to board and prevents additional passengers from boarding. For a minute and 30 seconds, existing passengers can remain until they get off. The four win, which increases a ship's maximum movement speed for 10 minutes, but you need 15 eco-friendly fuels in order to take advantage of it. I believe it la well, yeah, it already says 10 minutes, but that's still a lot of eco-fuel considering that you need, I believe, five pieces of organic fertilizer and one hay bale just for one so multiply that by 15 then of course the disembark which doesn't drop you off the ship it just means that you're no longer at the wheel and then of course the information on your ship I happen to name mine Old Creaky because that's what I named it at the moment as you can see, I have my guild crest on my ship. You can put one of these on your ship by first having a guild crest, or whatever you want to put on it. It doesn't have to be your guild crest, but a crest to put on the ship. And then you actually, you don't do it while the ship is up. You just click on the crest and then click on the ship in your bag. Or the, it's called the scroll in your bag, and that's how you get it. That's how you get the, and now I can't even get, there we go. And that's how you get the crest on your ship. I have the Adventure Clipper. Most people I've noticed have a tendency to get the Harpoon Clipper. The Harpoon Clipper is actually, if you have the Harpoon Clipper, the Harpoon will be on the front of the ship. And that is the thing that you'll see people use when they're dragging their ship across. <laughs> when they're dragging it across land for whatever reason that's how they're doing it I have the adventure clipper and the adventure clipper has this cannon and if I go to the cannon it'll say grab machine to control it and you'll see that I'm all ready to fire when ready but hey there is a catch and that catch is that I have to have one steel ammo in order to use it but it fires a cannon at a target to deal 150 siege damage and 700 range damage within four minutes with a small chance to trip enemies. So you can fire this at other boats. You can fire them at people. <laughs> Whatever trips your trigger. The other thing it comes with is two breathing apparatuses. This is one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I showed there is another video that I have out there that actually shows this thing in use. Um, if it's not charged and you click on it, it will say it's 
your character will actually say it's not fully charged. But this one is fully charged. Once fully charged, they will last nine minutes, and you can despawn your boat, and it'll still last nine minutes. You do seem to have an encumbrance issue when you do have it on, so if you want to get on land, be mindful of that. You can also drop them, and I imagine they will eventually respawn on your ship because I wore mine the full nine minutes, and it eventually fell off me, so to speak. And I have both of my breathing devices on my ship. And then lastly, you get a portable harpoon cannon. So if I want to carry... Oh, that, I'm not carrying a trade pack. That, it has to be referring to my um, glider, which I'm surprised it just didn't... Didn't whatever. But there is the portable harpoon cannon. And then if I want to drop it, I can just drop it and put it back down. So that's that. And actually, here, let me put that. Let's see. Yeah, let me put it, if I can find it. Yeah. Because it's not here. So maybe it takes it a minute to reappear or whatever. So I was going to look at it again to see what kind of damage because that one I believe requires ammo as well and it's not in my backpack and it's not on my character so I don't know where it went so hopefully it'll show back up again eventually <laughs> the clipper actually goes at a pretty good pace and I will just give you a little demonstration Right now it is moving, as you can see, 11 meters per second. I'm not going to go far. And that is darn fast. And all I'm doing is basically turning in a circle. Just to demonstrate how fast it can go. See straight ahead, 11.1. So it can go pretty quickly. That is one of the big benefits. You can do a route overseas, which I believe is probably why they also give you less money if you go on a trade route that is basically you can do it over water. Whether you do it over water or not is irrelevant in this game. The mere fact that you can do something like when you're going from one dock to another dock, you will get less money than if you're going, say, to something that is inland or from a spot that's inland to another inland spot. The boat itself does have a charge time on it so you can't just spawn it and despawn it and spawn it and despawn it over and over again. There is a charging period but as long as you take some time in between the charging and decharging period that won't be an issue. This is a great starter into trading either overseas or just from shore to shore so for example I'm on the western continent and it really comes in handy because you can do two crowns to Sol Reed Sol Reed to two crowns Sol Reed to Marianople Marianople to Sol Re Sol's Reed you can do Dewstone when Cinderstone is not at war you can actually swoop around here and still stay in um alliance controlled or at least neutral territory you hug the shore go past two crowns Marianople or if it is you can just cross over like if you have a spot on the beach like we do but anyway no ours is actually inside but if you go to the opposite side walk over to the opposite side you can go to sand deep or hell swamp or even a part of Halcyon. In fact, I've seen people from the other side go from Halcyon. So it really does come in handy just because of its quickness. Before a lot of guilds get the bigger ships like the merchant ship or... The merchant ship is the best one. You can get the galleon, but that's really made for, for fighting. It's not intended. I think it even only has like four storage packs. Whereas the merchant ship has like 20. But 
all of you can pile on and, and roll over um, earlier in the game, and it probably still goes on. There are people who will actually give you a ride for gold, of course, to the other side. Or, again, like I said, you can just do same side and just cut down on your travel time. So, handy-dandy entry-level tool into the bon voyage aspect of traveling and trading. And I've been disconnected, so that's going to end our video. Please like, subscribe, tell a friend, and thank you ever so much for watching.